Hi everyone, it's Casey from Casey on Location. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the Zoom Podtrack P4 for recording guests remotely. So let's get started. Here is the Zoom Podtrack P4. I have the P4 elevated off the desk using a smartphone clamp attached to the rear of the unit. Plus there is a 13 inch adjustable gooseneck clamp attached to the table. Over here is the Audio-Technica ATR2100X dynamic microphone. I got this $99 microphone from Amazon. The microphone has a short 3 feet Cable Matters XLR cable attached to channel 1 of the Podtrack P4. I got this short 3 feet cable from Amazon. It comes in a 2 pack and the brand name is Cable Matters. The microphone is attached to a Dinkum Systems Action Pod Pro adjustable clamp. This Dinkum clamp costs $40 but you can use any type of microphone stand that you prefer. And here is the Audio-Technica M20X monitoring headphones. This headphone costs $49, but you can use whatever headphone that you prefer, as long as it has a 3.5 millimeter tip that can connect to the bottom of the Podtrack P4. The headphones is connected into the headphone in port number one at the bottom of the Podtrack, and the Podtrack has four separate headphone in ports, and it doesn't matter which port you use for monitoring your audio recording. Here are the necessary cables that are required to use the remote channels 3 and 4. This is the Rode brand SC9 smartphone cable. This is a 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter TRRS to TRRS cable with the three black rings on each end. The Rode SC9 or similar type of cable is required for using channel three to bring on a remote guest using your smartphone. You can get this cable from Sweetwater Audio or B&H cameras. It costs $30. You might also need to use a special adapter to connect your smartphone to the Rode SC9 cable in case your smartphone does not have a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary port. In my case, because I'm using the Samsung Android Note 10 Plus phone that has no 3.5 millimeter aux cable, I need to use the USB-C to 3.5 millimeter adapter. The adapter I'm using is this white color cable made by Google that you can get from Best Buy or Amazon. It looks like this. This Google brand adapter costs about $12 to $15. Other similar types of adapters might work as well. If you are using an iPhone, you will need to get a different type of adapter, such as a lightning to 3.5 millimeter adapter. On the left side of the Podtrack P4, there are two different USB-C cables connected for different purposes. One USB-C cable is connected into an external rechargeable battery pack that will power the Podtrack for many hours. You want to use an external battery pack because the two AA batteries inside the Podtrack will die quickly if that's your only power source. In this case, I'm using a Mophie brand 10,000 milliamp battery that will last many hours of recording. So for powering the Podtrack using an external battery, a USB-C cable is connected into the DC 5 volt port and on the other end of the cable is connected to the battery. The other USB-C cable is connected from the Podtrack's USB-C port going into my laptop. So here is the DC 5 volt cable, USB-C cable, and it's connected right into my battery here. The other USB-C cable is going directly into my laptop. And now the Podtrack and my laptop are able to communicate with each other so that when I do a Zoom video call, the Podtrack can record all the audio from both myself as well as the other persons on the Zoom call. By the way, the Podtrack can record both a stereo mix of everyone's voices combined, plus will also record in multi-track for each other, for each person's voices separately in a different folder when downloaded to your computer. Now let's get into the details of how to record guests remotely using channels three and four. Here is a close-up view of the Podtrack for the settings 
for having both channel three and four enabled for bringing on two separate guests at the same time. When I say bringing on two remote guests at the same time, I mean that, for example, on channel three here, I can have a guest connected using a cell phone call or Google voice call or Facebook app calling, etc. At the same time, I can also have a second guest remotely connected using the channel four USB input here and have the guest on remotely using the Zoom or Skype video conferencing app, etc. As you can see here, the gain dial setting is at six for channels one, three, and four. Here it is on setting number six for channel one, setting gain dial setting six on channel three, also gain dial setting of six on channel four. Channel two is set for zero gain because that is unused with no microphone inserted. So here is channel two, it's set for zero gain. I should point out that it is important to have any unused channels set to zero gain. Otherwise, there might be unwanted electronic background noise introduced into the recording, especially if those unused channels have a very high gain dial setting. Again, this is true even if there is no microphone attached to the unused channels. On channel one, the lever is set to the left for my dynamic audio technica microphone. Here's what I mean by the left side. You'll see that there is a lever here that can click left to right. The left side is for dynamic microphones and the right side is for a condenser microphone. I have it set to the left side because this is a dynamic microphone. A dynamic type of microphone does not require 48 volts of phantom power. Therefore, the lever is set to the left side. However, if you are using a condenser type of microphone, you will need to set the lever to the right side to turn on phantom power. Otherwise, there will be no sound. For channels three and four, both of these levers are set to the far right for the smartphone and USB icons for remote connections. The reason I say far right is because there are actually three different settings for channels three and four, whereas there are only two settings for channels one and two. Channels three and four have the middle setting for condenser microphone that requires 48 volts of phantom power. So notice here closely that on channel three, there is an icon that looks like a smartphone right here. You need to have a lever set to this icon for channel three. Also notice that on channel four, there is an icon that looks like a lightning bolt right here. For the USB icon, you need to have the lever set to this USB icon for channel four. At this point, I need to point out something important. Do not insert a microphone into channels three and four when using those two channels for remote connections. If you mistakenly insert a microphone into channels three and four, when you are using these for remote connections, you will not be able to hear the audio correctly for both yourself and the other person. Again, on channel three and four, do not connect an XLR microphone into these channels if you are using channels three and four for remote connections. In order to start recording, you will need to first insert an XLR microphone into the pod track. If you are only recording yourself as one person, just go ahead and insert the mic into channel one of the pod track right here. Here's an example. If, for example, you have a co-host and you need to record a second person, go ahead and insert a second XLR microphone into channel two right here. I suggest setting the gain dial on channel one to about six as a starting point. You might need to raise or lower the gain dial depending on how loud you speak, how close you are to speaking into the microphone, and what type of mic you are using. The same thing also applies to the settings for channel two in case you have a co-host who will also be recorded. B 
Before you actually start recording live, you will want to experiment by talking into your microphone to see where the vertical decibel meter is reading on the LCD screen. Ideally, you want to have the decibel scale register somewhere between negative 6 to negative 12. The Potrack LCD screen does not have any numbers, it does not show any numbers, but you can roughly estimate this by having your voice somewhere in the range of somewhere between 75 to 80% near the top of the vertical bars. So here is my microphone connected to, into channel one of the Potrack. Let me just uh, zoom out a little bit. So here's the Audio-Technica microphone. Zoom out a little bit more. And I have the cable connected into channel one right here. And this is the only microphone that's connected into the Potrack P4. Let me just zoom in some more now. So now let me show you, this is the LCD screen that I was referring to. I'm going to talk into this microphone and you're going to see as I'm speaking into the microphone here that where it says one here, that represents channel one, the vertical bar is going to jump up and down depending on how loud I am as well as how high or how low the gain dial is set for. In this case, it's set for six on channel one. So let me just first tap on the microphone and you're going to see the vertical bars go up and down. So watch this. So you can really see a jump as I'm tapping on the microphone, which means this microphone is live, it's recording. I don't actually have, actually I'm just do it right now. I'm gonna press the record button just for the sake of demonstration. Okay. So now I'm going to speak directly into the microphone. I am speaking into the microphone. However, the recording of my voice for this video is being recorded by my cell phone. So you're not actually hearing my voice uh, via the Audio-Technica microphone. You're hearing my voice using the camera of my smartphone that is recording this video. But as I'm speaking into the microphone, you will see these vertical bars jump up and down. So again, as I mentioned, there are no numbers displayed on the LCD screen, but the very you should know that at the very top of the uh, screen right here, at the very, very top, that represents zero on the decibel scale. And if you look very closely, uh, let me just zoom in a little bit more here. If you look very closely, you will see that there are like these notches, these little, I don't know, indentations, and the very top represents zero. The next notch down represents negative six. The next one lower is negative 12. Below that is negative 18. So this is what I mean by, you can uh, roughly guesstimate where the vertical uh, bars are hitting for you to know whether you're reaching roughly negative 6 to negative 12. So as I'm speaking right now, the vertical bar is roughly at about negative 6, which is an ideal recording volume. Uh, let me just zoom out a little bit more here so that, okay, so watch this. So right now, the only channel that's being used is channel 1 right here, where I have XLR1 microphone is attached to channel one. I have the gain dial set at six right now. Here's at six. And if you need to adjust the uh, decibel here so that it's either uh, lower or higher, you would do it by changing the dial right here. So watch this. When I change it down to, let's say, five, four, three, two, one, zero, you're going to notice that the decibel bar will keep going lower and lower and lower. And when I get to zero on the gain dial here, um, there will be no audio recorded by the PodTrack P4. You're only hearing the audio uh, coming out of this video from my camera's uh, microphone, but not by the Audio-Technica microphone for this uh, demonstration purpose. And then after I do that, I'm going to do the reverse and I'm going to have the gain dial set in the reverse direction for higher, like seven, eight, nine, ten, and you will see that it will uh, go into the zero zone. 
and zero represents peaking, otherwise known as clipping, which means your audio is way too high for recording and then you will need to adjust accordingly. So right now we're at six and mic check at six, mic check at five, mic check at four, mic check at three, mic check at two, mic check at one, mic check at zero, we're at zero now, mic check at one, mic check at two, mic check at three, mic check at four, mic check at five, mic check at six. We're back up to six on the gain dial where I was previously, and now I'm going to go higher. Mic check at seven, mic check at eight, mic check at nine, mic check at 10. Now at 10, which is the maximum uh, level for my gain setting here on channel one, I am way hot. I am peaking, otherwise known as clipping, and you'll see on the vertical dial right here, I'm constantly hitting at the very top of the LCD screen, which represents zero, so it's just way too high. So that means I need to re uh, reduce the gain dial back down lower. Here's nine, mic check at eight, mic check at seven, mic check at six. Now at the six gain dial setting here, as I'm speaking in about the same volume of my voice, uh, the vertical bar is roughly hitting around the 75% level. Uh, and I think that's the ideal setting, which represents negative six. And you wanna be somewhere around negative six and no lower than negative 12. You certainly don't wanna be at zero, which is at the very top of the LCD screen, such as now, mic check, and yeah, that's way too loud. Anyway, so that's how you would experiment uh, by adjusting your gain dial knob here to either lower or higher. Uh, so, and as you're mon monitoring your recording volume, you want to have the vertical bars at roughly 75% of maximum. Uh, and that represents negative six on the decibel scale, even though there are no numbers showing on the Podrack LCD screen. So that is your uh, little tutorial there for how to adjust your gain dial and recording volume appropriately. On channel three for the smartphone remote connection, I suggest having the gain dial set at six as a starting point. The gain dial on channel three is for how loud the voice will record from your remote guest on the phone. You may need to adjust the gain dial up or down to find the ideal recording volume. Additionally, it is also very important to have the volume setting at an appropriate level on your smartphone. I'm referring to your phone volume, not to the pod track gain volume. If your smartphone volume is set too low, you will hear nothing from the other person on the phone. So again, I'm referring to your smartphone. You need to have whatever buttons you use to have the uh, volume level set at an appropriate level. If it's too low, uh, you'll hear nothing from the other person on the phone. So you will need to adjust the volume on the phone in combination with the channel three gain dial to find the ideal recording level. I have my own smartphone volume setting somewhere between 75 to 80 percent of maximum as a starting point and then i may have to adjust accordingly again you want to watch the vertical decibel bars to make sure the recording volume is at an appropriate level hitting somewhere between 75 to 80 percent of maximum which is roughly the equivalent of between negative 6 to negative 12 on the decibel scale this is the decibel scale that I'm referring to. You want to be roughly at about 75% near the top of the top of the screen here. So at about 75%, it represents roughly negative six on the decibel scale. On channel four for the USB connection, I also suggest having the gain dial at six as a starting point and you may need to raise or lower the gain to get the ideal recording volume. 
If you are using the Zoom video conferencing app on channel four, it is also important to go into the menu setting and have your audio settings adjusted for the right amount of volume for both the microphone setting and the speaker setting. For example, here's what the Zoom desktop app looks like for the audio menu setting. Where it says microphone, you need to adjust the microphone to maybe somewhere around 75 to 85% of maximum. So here is the settings menu, main menu in the uh, Zoom desktop app. And then you click here for where it says audio and where it says microphone right here. You want to have this slider that goes left and right. I usually have mine right around 75 to 80% of maximum. Maximum is right over here. So you will need to experiment with this volume setting to get the ideal recording volume. Where it says speaker, you will need to also adjust this accordingly. I suggest having this set to somewhere around 65 to 75%. So over here where it says speaker, here's another slider, and I usually have it set oh, maybe somewhere right around the 75% level. And by the way, the speaker volume on the Zoom app is only for the volume of what you are hearing through your headphones. It is not the recording volume. So experiment with this setting as well so you can hear the audio through your headphones at a good level. Another very useful feature found within the uh, Zoom audio menu is to first test your microphone volume by speaking into your microphone and hitting this test button here. Now it says recording and it says, please speak to your microphone. So go ahead and say something in your microphone and after you're done, it'll say playing and then you can monitor your recorded volume through your headphones. And if it's either too loud or too low, you can adjust the slider here left or right to make it lower or higher and then press the test mic button again uh, do another test recording and then unclick that or i'm sorry hit it again now it says playing so then it'll play back your test recording uh, so you can be able to see if the new test recording is at a suitable level and also up top here where it says speaker test speaker you can also press that button and then you will hear a tone it's like a little jingle on your headphones that you can hear through your headphones uh, if it's too loud or too low you can just move the slider to the left or right to make it louder uh, or lower and so those are uh, you can press stop here by the way to uh, stop playing the jingle so those are very useful to have like these test buttons to test the microphone uh, recording volume as well as to press the uh, speaker button here to test how loud it is to hear it back through your headphones. So go ahead and give that a try. So lastly, if you are using the Zoom video conferencing desktop app for recording audio to your PodTrack P4, it is important to also have the microphone and speaker drop-down menu choices set for Zoom P4 audio. So let me show you what I mean by that. Right here where it says microphone, there is a drop-down menu here. When you click on that, you'll see all your different choices of microphones. You wanna make sure you have it set for Zoom P4 audio. And same thing here for where it says speaker, hit the drop-down menu button and also have that set for Zoom P4 audio. If you do not do this, the Zoom video conferencing app will not record any audio after you try playing back a recorded Zoom meeting. You will only see the video, but there will be no sound. So make sure you have both the microphone and speaker settings set for the Zoom P4 audio. I hope you liked the video. If you found this useful, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time.